So my name is Dr. Greg Forlenza, and I'm one of the professors at the Barbara Davis Center who's an investigator on the study that we're doing up in Breckenridge this week. We're doing an artificial pancreas study on the system being developed by University of Virginia in kids who were skiing up here for five days um, in the beautiful uh, resort here at Breckenridge. And this study is part of a group of studies that is trying to move artificial pancreas technology from being used solely in research settings to finally getting it out into the home and the real world where kids will be able to use it on a daily basis. A big part of this technology is being able to incorporate exercise into the systems. And so this study, to me, as one of the people who was helping to design it, really has two roles. One is to look at the utility of the current system. Is it ready to go out into the real world? And the other is to help develop future generations of the system. And so the first question of whether or not the system is ready to go out into the real world we'll be evaluating over the next few weeks as we look at the data to see whether or not this system is superior to what's being currently done. So far, after almost seven days of doing this study, it's been completely safe. We haven't had any health problems as a result of using this study, nor did they have any in Virginia, which is a really big hurdle to clear when you're trying to get a device approved by the FDA. The second question is to see if it's better, and in that sense, I think it might have some incremental benefit, but won't be all the way there yet. And like any technology, it will go through many generations of improvement before it gets to being ideal and what people really want to see. Um, and from this point, you can actually have many different directions, and that's a lot of the debate that we have in our field, is whether or not people want to add more and more complexity to the system. And so, so far, we've kind of observed that it's been very good at bringing down blood sugars when they're elevated, but hasn't necessarily stopped as many lows as we might have expected. And there are some other ways of trying to add that function to the system. And so right now, the system that we're using only contains one hormone. It just contains insulin. So so thinking about a car, it's like driving a car with just a gas pedal. You can give more gas or you can give less gas, but you can't stop the car except by taking away the gas and waiting for the car to stop. The way that people propose to helping the car stop is to give it a break, which in the case of diabetes is glucagon. And this summer, our group is going to be starting uh, a project collaborating with a group in Boston about using a system that is a dual hormone system, a system that has glucagon in it. And <clears throat> studies on that are very early, and we're not clear if that provides enough incremental benefit, and so that's going to be something that we look at. Another thing that the University of Virginia group is very heavily involved in is actually directly incorporating exercise data into the system. And so in this study, and this is the part that I'm really excited about, the kids all wore Fitbits the entire week to try and capture their exercise data. Now right now that's not feeding into the system, but it could very easily do that. Your phones all have information in them capturing exercise. I have a step counter on mine that I look at every day to see if I've been, been sitting at my desk for too long and the Fitbits all also can send out a Bluetooth signal to your phone. And so future generations of the system, the very brilliant engineers at University of Virginia, could incorporate that information as well. So the system would know how active the kids were being and decrease insulin as a result of that and maybe even predict that it might need to decrease insulin several hours later. So that's another direction that these systems might be going. Um, the system that we're using here is still kind of the research system and so it has some connectivity issues that would be frustrating for people to use at home. They know that and they're working those out as they go over the next six months to the commercial version of the system. And so those are really the main benefits that I see for the system is helping the kids not have to worry so much about their diabetes, just go out and ski and play soccer and football and just be able to do those things without worry about their blood sugar going low. And adding additional features as we get to future generations of the system will hopefully enable us to accomplish that. The methods, as I said, are using either an additional hormone or using additional data gathering that maybe you can use at some times and not others to try and make the system have the least burden possible and have the most benefit for the kids. And so far, all the kids that we've talked to have been very excited about it. We've just kind of asked them, do you like being in the study? Which they all have loved. They're having a great time and are downstairs probably making too much noise right now. 
and they've all said that they feel like it's helped their numbers be a lot better, and that's, that's the goal for this. And so I'm really excited about doing this work, and I'm really excited about, you know, seeing the benefits in the kids and, you know, providing them with something that makes their lives better and makes lives better for people with diabetes. So it's been a really fun week. We've really enjoyed it, and uh, hopefully we're going to really make some changes for kids with diabetes.